So there you have it, family. Peace and black power. This is your brother Sarnetta giving you an update on what's going on. As we hear our brother Dr. Reggie tell you, this is going to be a powerful black power meeting weekend coming up December the 12th. It all starts and it goes down December the 12th, family. You don't want to miss it. We're going to meet up over here where Brother Reggie shows you. What, what street was that? 83rd? Yes, 83rd. 80, 83rd Street and 5th Avenue. Avenue. Y'all don't want to miss it. It's going down. For those of y'all who are flying into town, who's coming to the Comedic Armageddon War Conference, if you will be in town on Saturday, hook up with Dr. Reggie. Hook up with your brother Sarnetta. We're going to put a link in there. Give me a call. Let us know that you want to be the one on the list going up into the Metropolitan Museum. We're going to give y'all a sample of what y'all going to be missing. That way, bring your cameras, bring your still cameras so you can take it back and share it with your family. This is you, family. If you don't know about this science, then you're missing out. When you look at all the other cultures, they're bringing their children here to what? To learn about you, to steal your science. So we got to bring our family. If you can't bring your babies, bring your camera and bring it back to them. This is going down. It's powerful. Now, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock sharp. 12. December the 12th, 12 o'clock sharp. We can't be waiting the on everybody. Is. The donation is $20 a person. $20 a person. So come on with us. You can see it. You see the background turn around, Reggie? Let's see what's up, man. This is how it is. It's going down, family. Y'all don't want to miss it. Everybody keeps saying, when are y'all going back? Well, now you're finding out. December the 12th is going down. It's on and popping that weekend, family. Y'all don't want to miss it. It's going to be beautiful, man. We're just going to have fun. It's all love, man. Black Power family, you already know what it is. It's going down. Black Power Weekend, December the 12th and December the 13th. December the 12th, me and brother Dr. Reggie, we will be meeting up on 83rd Street and 5th Avenue because we are doing the museum tour for those who are coming to the lecture. If you are here on that day, on Friday or Saturday, come and meet up with us. Give us a call. Let us know that you are interested in coming to the tour. Family, this is going to be one experience you will never forget. Dr. Reggie is going to give you a powerful museum tour, break down the mental netta, and showing you the sculptures in the, I mean, it's just going to be off the hook. Then, and then we're going to have December the 13th, the Comedic Armageddon War Conference at the National Black Theater. It's going down, family. If you're conscious. And awake and wake. You heard about Sarnetter TV If you're conscious, why you hating? Some of us think too small, just too afraid to fall If you're conscious and awake and wake. You know that the studio gets deep and history in the making man. Let's get up from the fall Wise up and take it all Peace Black Family This is 
it's your brother Reggie, and welcome to another edition of Sardetta Studios, Black News 102, House of Consciousness. We're here live today at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and we have a great show. We are on 83rd Street and 5th Avenue, 83rd Street and 5th Avenue, and across the street from that sign is the museum, and there's some chairs, and we will be assembled here on December 12th at 12 o'clock for a museum tour, an exclusive museum tour at 12.30. So you need to get here exactly at 12 o'clock. You also need to RSVP at rapmarketing at hotmail.com. R-A-P marketing at hotmail.com so that we have an idea of how many people are going to come, right? Because we have to, uh, the museum is charging us, right? So we have to know. So on December 12th, before the Kemetic War Conference, the Armageddon Conference, that is going to be on the 13th, we're going to assemble here. So this is a full Black Power Weekend for the House of Consciousness and all of its supporters, New Covenant and King Simon Productions, right and all of us and the Amira squad and all the people that support us uh, on December 12th and December 13th but on December 12th we're going to be walking through the museum again to take back now Valley culture and we are going to uh, deal with an important exhibit on the Middle Egyptian Kingdom and it is called uh, Egypt Transformed this is after the first intermediate period when Kemet gets back on its foot. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about this as we walk through the exhibit, and we're going to look for some important jewels. I want to give special thanks to all of our House of Consciousness members, but I, I definitely want to give a shout-out to our Sister Love Son, who uh, on my last uh, uh, um, trip, she brought me this important book, as she came for a uh, private study on Nile Valley culture. I want to thank Sister Tracy, um, Sister Tracy Jones, but I also want to uh, thank some of the other female posters, uh, Sci-Fi Living, A New Kid of Kemet, right? Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, this is an important one. This is the apartment. Uh, Kemet Student, right? And Kemet Goddess, or Goddess of Kemet, right? These sisters are now uh, studying the Medinetra, and, and shout out to Sister Lolita. We have more and more sisters now studying Nile Valley culture. Oh, and Sister Ebony, who's a student of mine in the Medinetra class. We are so proud to have so many new sisters who are studying the Medinetra, studying Nile Valley culture, right, and incorporating, incorporating in, his, in their lives. Soon after this, uh, conference that we're going to do on September 12th and September 13th. Sarnetta is looking for the new young masters, right? And that is going to be big. So you know, uh, at one point, Brother Reggie was a young master. So you know, at one point, Brother Reggie himself was a young master. Uh, so you know that at a certain period of time, Brother Reggie was a young master. Brother Polite, the young phenon was a young master. Shaka Amos was a young master, right? There are now some great new young people. There's, there are now some great young new people, such as Ujawo, such as Neda Neb, tr such as True Storian, uh, uh, such as Theos Melik. Uh, there are um, young people in the uh, uh, the MPKs, right, that are studying real hard. There's certainly brothers in Team Osiris. Shout out to Brother Kufu. We are looking now for the new young masters of Nile Valley and history, Nile Valley culture and history. So we're going to be featuring uh, an event live so that we can do a whole event on looking for the new and best of 
the next generation of scholars. And I can tell you some of them, like Netanyahu and uh, Ujao, are ferocious. Uh, we saw, we, uh, you, you seen Brother Sinjeti, uh, you definitely know Brother Asaw, and you definitely know Uncle Keck, right? But there's a whole host of new and exciting brothers and sisters. So now, when you look at when you going into this, what's, what do you see, brother, on your way entering into the museum? What do you see on your way entering into the museum? What's the first thing that comes to your mind, Dr. Reggie? Well, we see, well, the Metropolitan Museum of Art is a temple in itself, right? A temple of mysteries, of many mysteries. However, the mystery that is on the bottom is certainly uh, the steps right. of the Great Step Pyramid right. of, of Zozer and Imhotep. And then the columns represent the great uh, temples of Karnak and, and, and Luxor. Like this is the Step Pyramid, brother. Where is ball? So that we see above the steps and above the columns, then we see the takeover of Europeans uh, presenting themselves up on the top, largely from concepts of the Potomac uh, period. However, these temples or this museum is actually a replica of the great temples in the Nile Valley culture. And all civilizations stand on Nile Valley civilization. They do not have a record of having temples such as this in any other culture. So the other thing that you see, Sarnetta, is largely European cultures coming into the museum. They make an investment in their supremacy, and they make an investment. They bring their children here to learn. Right. And they bring their children here to learn. And those children do not reflect any of us. So this is warfare. This is warfare. And so when you get mad so at... you think they're going to teach them why they're going in there? And when these young people go in, what do you think that they're going to teach them? They're going to teach them their supremacy, right? So that they could fulfill another generation of white supremacy on top of us. Now, our children are in the classrooms getting regurgitated information, and their children are getting primary information. There is a big difference, but there is an explosion, and Sarnetta Studios is ahead of that because we're now able to deal with the primaries. So up until Sarnetta Studios and the museum tours, a lot of people just showed slides. The difference between what Sarnetta is doing with and forcing his scholars to do is to show and prove in the meta nature. A lot of people like to show slideshows of the meta nature, slideshows of temples and architecture, but Sarnetta is forcing this new group of scholars to show and prove their research. And it's just not now Valley scholars. He's forcing the Hebrews to come into the museum. He's dying to get the Hebrews into the museum to explain the exhibitions or disexplain it, right? He's forcing all the other groups, the Christians, to get into the museum, right? And to see, first of all, if they even study what's in the museum. We are in exhibit, Ancient Egypt Transformed the Middle Kingdom. Hotep, and welcome to another edition of Sarnetta Studios. Who is this? This is the Norsut Mental Hotep. He is one of the um, Norsuts that is very important in the unification or the several unifications of ancient Kemet. He is a revered ancestor to most ancient Egyptian Norsuts. Mental Hotep is uh, someone that they will again and again use his name and use some of his artifacts in their own works as a revered ancestor uh, for it was him who understood uh, the dynamics of uh, warfare and invasion 
uh, and what would come to pass with ancient Egypt. So he helped Use to fortify. The to talk about his nose, his lips. So, you know. so this this exhibit was formerly downstairs on the first floor when we did the first tour. Oh, they moved this? They moved this one up because this is an exhibit about him and others of that particular period. So we had seen him before, but now we're dealing specifically with the 12th dynasty. All right, let's so we can come over here. So today we are in search of treasures of the 12th dynasty. 12th dynasty for us is a kingdom of transformation. And what I mean by transformation is that Kemet was a, unfortunately, a result of its own success in that the earlier dynasties uh, up to the fourth dynasty failed. Um, after the fourth and fifth dynasty, Kemet began to decline because their strategy of government uh, ended up um, failing because Kemet began to hire families instead of the most qualified workers. And then came the invasions. So, yes. Well, um, so the 12th dynasty is, in, is important because of the language becomes very, very refined and very, very clear to read. So in most of these, you will see the Hotep Dinosut. In this case, it's, it's Enpu. And the beginning of a funerary prayer that you will find from the third dynasty to the end of the uh, end of Kemet, and it is the same state funeral that everyone um, receives. And, and here you can see their diet and what they get. So I know that there are a lot of people in the community that are vegetarians, but the offerings consisted of legs of cattle, um, seafood, um, ducks, lamb, ducks, ducks fish. fish and other, um, and also herbs, and other type of um, um, uh, edible, but the, 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 the ancient Kemet had a full diet, and this was part of the offerings that they would receive in the afterlife, but we're here to look for some very important secrets of ancient Kemet. So walk with us as we look for it, because the 12th dynasty, importantly, 12th dynasty is interesting and controversial. On one hand, you have many pyramids that were in fact built with, Keep talking. Keep talking. yeah, you have many pyramids that were in fact built with um, brick, um, um, brick, and mud, right? And many of those um, temples actually fell. The reason why they fell is because um, in the intermediate intermediate period, uh, the first intermediate period, they forgot some of their, um, they forgot some of their. So in this case, um, Kemet was. Um, restoring and improving itself from the lessons learned from the failure of the first to fourth uh, dynasties. And so that we find in ancient Kemet this time, we find that the language uh, becomes much more refined, much more structured, and it becomes a complete grammar. So, but we're looking for some secrets. So let's walk. One of the things that ancient Kemet learned was not to be symbolic in its um, capitals. So when um, the new king uh, came to power, Amenhat, who is the founder of the 12th dynasty, they actually moved uh, Kemet uh, from one capital to another, and it was flexible because of wars. So Amenhat is an important uh, pharaoh because of being strategic understanding that Kemet could be invaded. And soon um, he will establish a very strong Kemet to give to his son, Sinwarset, who many of us know as Sesostris. So and let me we'll ask you, um, Brother Dr. Reggie, why do they continually, being that this is the museum, why are they continually referring to Kemet as Egypt? Shouldn't they by now know the original name of it? Why are they not using it, using Kemet? Well, um, for the purposes of the type of education that they um, deliver 
to um, the world, um, it is better to talk into, in terms of Greek and English and Latin in instead of talking in terms of the ancient language. Their purpose is, is there for their um, educational system on a high level, yes, they deal with the hieroglyphics or the meta nature, but for, but for um, the commoners and for colonialism, they deal with uh, making sure that the English and the Greeks uh, and the Latins and the French have um, imperialism over and colonialism over African artifacts. So Could once we response. once we once we know that it is African, then we can ask for it back. So most of the stuff, of course, that we see are coming from funerary um, uh, treasures, and that's where they are most preserved because they were preserved in the in the earth. Um, again, here. Um, it's more funerary, um, so you're seeing, in this case, it's giving life, and this it says to bay a debt, giving life to bay a debt, and then we see um, forever, giving life to bay a debt forever, give life, so this is just a uh, kind of an honorary um, title, and then we see his name, something like Ib, Hotep, Pet, uh, Pet Ray. I'm missing this because I can't see it very clearly right here. But this is a funerary um, uh, Stella. But we're going to go on because there are some important. Oh, this is important. This vase right here is important when you look at it because this, is, this vase contains ancient Egyptian hexes or prayers against the foreigners. So in this particular um, piece right here, um, you will see that um, ancient Egyptians were very aware of its invaders in the uh, 12th dynasty, and they created these vases that came to uh, burial to protect the future, um, the future from the what had happened in the past. And these will probably be what will become the nine bowls. But we are talking about the Libyans, and we're talking about or the Tenehu, and we're talking about other invaders of Kemet. So this is important. Um, obviously, these are very um, many different kings of the 11th and 12th. 13th dynasty. Who do he look like? Who do he look like? Hmm? Yeah. Oh, what, es on the mic. what ethnicity do you think the Egyptians were? What ethnicity? Were, were they African? Were they Europeans? Were they Greek. Middle Eastern? Were they Greek? Were they Arabs? Who do you think they were? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. Yes? Um, do you... Um, well, you think the Egyptians are the Arabs of the day? That they are the ancient people? Or were they were there invasions, the Arab invasions? Yeah. So, so, because our argument is that the Arabs that are there today are not the... When you look at that right there, mm -hmm. what does that image remind you of? Would you say that they were African or were they um, Indian, Arabs? Arabs, uh, Persians. Uh, what ethnicity did you see um, when you look After at Egyptian artifacts? Huh? After seeing that statue? Yes. Persian. What? Kush? Persian. Kush? From Kush? From ancient Kush, no, no, Persia. Huh? Persia. Persia. You believe that there was Persia. Well, the ancient Egyptians were actually enemies of Persia. Um, Darius, the, you know Darius the first, Xerxes, right? They were Persians, and they came in and they conquered Egypt in the later dynasties for a short time, right? So the ancient Egyptians were actually enemies of Persia, but Darius, and Darius, of course, was an enemy of the Greeks. 
So it's more interesting to how people just think what ancient Egyptians really look like. But they are certainly people of color, and they are certainly Africans. But and and because it's in the continent of Africa, so yeah. But thanks. <laughs> so um, I'm not excited. Oh, so sorry. So. Um, How you doing? Let me see. When you look at that right there, what type of people do you think they were? Talk to them. Yeah, are you, um, where are you from? From China. You're from China? Yes. Thanks. Um, when you come and look at other cultures, right, like ancient Egypt, what have they told you that the ancient Egyptians were ethnic? They're ethnic. Were they African? Were they Arab? Were they were they Persian? Were they what 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 have you learned in your school? Did you get educated in China or yes, here? I did. Okay, so what did they tell you about? Um, even though this is in a continent of Africa, who do you think that they are? Egypt. Yes, Egypt. The people. We don't. You don't talk. We don't learn a lot about Egypt. Oh, you don't. Uh, just a little bit history. About Egypt. So where did writing come from? Do they teach you where writing came from? My writing. Chinese writing. Uh, yes, Chinese writing. I think it's where, from China. It came from China. Was it influenced by other peoples, or so it was just Chinese? Just it was Chinese. Chinese. Yeah. Before, right. before we have that traditional Chinese. Yes. Now it's a simple. Were Chinese ever black? Were they ever black people? Huh? Yes. Were they ever black people? Did, meaning, the first humans in the world, were they Africa? Were they African? So that means those people might have migrated to China at some point and brought their culture. Yeah. You never seen black Chinese? In dark skin Chinese? You never seen dark skin Chinese? Yes. Dark skin, his complexion. Skin. I don't even know that. Huh? It's, you mean the yes, color? Yes, yes, skin. I never see a black Chinese. You never see um, black Chinese? No. But historically, so you have no mibs, no ancient literature of black. What about Buddha? Why is Buddha always black? I don't know that. But you know Buddha's black? I don't know that. You never seen Buddha? Yeah, hi. How are you? No, just take a still. We gotta come on. Thanks. So this is one of the famous um, pyramids of Amenhet. And Amenhet, um, the problem with yes, the problem the problem with um, these temples is that the building materials changed and when they changed they changed from actually building it with stone to building it with um, brick and mud so Sarnetta the issue yes, yeah. so yeah yeah so you know it's difficult in the museum um, because the museum wants to retain licenses of its um, work uh, but we're certainly trying to do some education because there's so many black people that don't go to museums. But, so I'm going to tell. Excuse me. I'm going to tell. How you doing? Um, when you look at the pyramid, what is your understanding? This is the first fat man i ever seen in Kenya. It's on. It's on. Tell us about how we get followed. Yeah, so it's difficult in the museum because they don't want us to... Um, be able to tell our story. They want to be in charge of telling the story. So they don't want us uh, connected to the uh, primaries for educational period, uh, educational purposes. So they want to be the only ones to be able to do documentaries. And they will never give us the license to do a documentary. Of the pieces, Sonetta, this piece right here is probably the mo one of the most important. Which one? That one right there. The one with the man? No. Let's go there. Okay. Wow. 
So one of the new things that is important for African Nile Valley scholars is to be able to deal with primary uh, information. So this stella right here is a very important stella because it is what you call the Sinwar Set Boundary Stella. And this is the reason why we come to this museum um, for this exhibit to see this rare artifact. This particular piece is a boundary marker marking the boundary between ancient Kemet and ancient Nubia. And many people say that the ancient Egyptians encroached on Nubia, but that was not the case. What happened was, no, but that was, um, that was not the case. The case was that Nubia began encroaching on ancient Kemet at a very difficult time for ancient Egypt because Egypt was being encroached on by from the um, the Tenehu from the west of Egypt and from the people coming into Canaan, and then. Nubia or uh, Kerma civilization seen that ancient Kemet was weak and they began to encroach on ancient Kemet. So Sinwar Set uh, created a boundary stella and so let's just read some of this. Wow, over here this says, um, this is the Bayadet and this is, says, so, uh, give life to the transforming um, ending of the two ladies and then you see the birth of the Necha and then you see Ka Karu, Ka Karu, right? And it says give life. So this is one of the names of Sinwar Set. So um, here, what we do is we look at um, give life, and then there's a title in the Sara. And then we see um, his other name, um, which is Sinwar Set. And we see Usur. And we see uh, Set, In, Set, Er, Usuret. So we know we're talking about Usuret. And then we see and give life, stability to him. And then it tells us, the ancient Egyptians tell us the dates. And so this basically says, Rin Pet, the season. And then we see this is 10, 6, and then it's like the third day that this stella was written. And then the stella begins to tell us the story of this boundary. And we know that because this, this glyph right here is the boundary. And it was established in the southern territory of Hay. So this complete um, picture tells us uh, the story Right. Uh, yes, yeah, some of it, and most people. Um, we, we study Nile Valley culture, so we can definitely read many parts of this real easily, like Rinpad, and this is like the uh, 16th, um, and this is the third of their month system, and then we see this is a boundary, and we know the boundaries established in this particular period here. And then we see that this, um, so we study Nile Valley culture in our, um, in our culture now because we connect, um, we are connected now back to Africa. For many years, this has been taken from us. And so um, this is a language, this is an African language. Right. And so it's just a matter of understanding. That's correct. So yes, there's many parts of this that we Africans now can study. So, so Sa, um, one of the things on the uh, museum tour that we do, we may get more into this particular text. So this is just a preview. And certainly in my metanetric classes, we go and we talk about this. But this, this, this line right here basically says that he established a boundary right, um, better than his forefathers. And we see this right here, this tef right here, it means father. And we established the boundary um, better than our forefathers. So this, this thing right here is probably the most famous artifact in the whole museum that we're here to see. But we're going to look for some other treasures. But the other one uh, that I... This happens to be statuettes of the provincial governor, Ukotep, and his family. 
and you can clearly see that his family were African. Uh, this might be a man with, um, in this picture, um, either two wives or a wife and a daughter and definitely a child. And then the rest of the pieces, you see an African family. You see here, clearly African in the 12th dynasty. But I don't think that we have to go back and forth saying that they represented Africa. We don't have to. We already know animals. They did. But they also have a positive and a negative in their, um, in their thinking. So, and you often see the pharaoh for the virility always fighting against the hippopotamus, which is sometimes um, represented as Seth. But the hippopotamus is also interested or important for birth. Um, the crocodile is another important one, and you see him as the evil crocodile. You see, you see the crocodile as important because the crocodile is sometimes um, the deity uh, Sobek as a warrior um, netter. Um, uh, and sometimes you see the, um, the, um, the crocodile is a ferocious animal that needs to be destroyed. So to see um, the 12th dynasty to the 15th dynasty and its finest, you see the very more... Oh, jeez. Here's a picture of Sobek, and this is a very rare and important piece of Sobek because here you see him in a human and animal form at the same time, and that um, animals were venerated um, and humans took on uh, many qualities. So you would see uh, Sobek being a warrior deity, for, um, and, but this in itself is a very, very rare piece of Egyptian uh, art and artifacts. Um, that it's important to come to the museum to see this particular piece. So many people uh, have a misconception about how um, ancient Egyptians or the Remet or Kemet were buried and they were actually buried on their sides um, facing instead of looking up to the sky so you will see many uh, sarcophagus or um, in the position in this particular position right here so why was they buried on their side why do you think um, to be prone to be active um, because there's life after death instead of just being on their back as if they were just dead so was on side. they were buried on their sides hmm. to be more prone um, because they're they're going to relive instead of just being on their back to kind of decompose they are going to be active they're going to get up out of the coffin their body their car is going to move so they're in a position of not dead but life after life or, yeah. hmm. so, and that's why they're in that position but most people have that misconception um, of, of what that that death is final, but death is not final. So that they are prone. They're not on their back. They are like in a position to 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 get up. So there is this. Uh, so. So. Um, one of the things about ancient um, Kemet that is um, imp really important is to begin to have the primaries in front of you so that you could um, continuously analyze and look for clues and treasures that you won't find in any book. So when we have the, like, the real art and artifacts, Sarnetta, mm -hmm. you see things, you see colors, you see expressions that you won't see necessarily in a flat book. So this is why we're here in this exhibition to look for clues. And there's one more piece is interesting, Sa, because this is the fabled snake and staff. So we're actually looking at the female deity that 
was blown up in the Bible in the um, contest between the North Sut and the um, person that they call Moses. And it is here in this particular deity that you see the power of these staff and the snake. And this is a very rare piece. This piece right here is a very, very rare piece that you will see. And it is, so one of the things that we haven't found is if the Hebrews were in this period, why wouldn't the museum show them Sonata? That's a good question. Yeah. The, the, the reality is that, that the museum has not enough evidence to show any groups of people other than Africans um, in the 12th to the 15th dynasty um, in any major um, importance. Can you hear me? So, wow. So, here are some very, very rare figures of the Norsut, or king, holding foreign prisoners. And these are um, what you call, like I was talking about before, like excretion text, where they know who their enemies are, and so it, their enemies are really well defined. And so, here you have a Norsut holding a, as a lion, or a sphinx holding an enemy by his head. And then you have another one where they have an, an enemy of Kemet being submitted, not murdered, not killed, but submitted. And so, yes, it is true that ancient Egyptians and the people of um, Ta-Nehisi and Nehisi had difficulties, but they weren't always violent. It was more about submitting, more about either working together and treaties, because they were certainly two different kingdoms. So these are excretion texts. So we're going to um, So when you come to ancient Kemet, you see all the signs and symbols of primordial man in quick, very quick exhibitions. So you see the sitting and squatting positions of, of the Asians, and you see the um, say, who do you end see do that of today? the is, so, so you see a number of different cultures uh, mimic ancient Egypt, including the Arabs and the Asians. Right in their prostrating positions, their submitting positions, and their study positions. So on that one over there, so I look at that one over there. Uh, you see yeah, that's how a Muslims big noble, say. and you see them that he has his uh, right foot forward, and that but he's also in a very submission, study um, position. Right. Okay. Well. This is one of the pieces that I came to this museum to see. And this um, piece is a um, piece of um, a person who we would believe is in the mystery systems. And how would I might know it? Do you have the pointer? No. OK. Um, that in the line, after it says it's giving life to Horus and the Nosot Biddy and the two ladies, and then the name of the um, person, which is kind of like Hotep, um, Min Min Re, Sara, Sara Min Min, um, um, U Hotep. Um, that is one of his names. The second line is an important line because it tells you that he is a person who understands the mysteries and who understands. Um, the medu nature and that he understands magic and so how do we know that so we're going to look can at a couple pieces some of the, some of the pieces um, I can I can read That's cool. so um, that? in college and through black scholars who study ancient Egyptian medu nature um, and ancient Egyptian language and so we study it's an African culture so we study African languages because it's on the continent of Africa and that they are our ancestors. So we revere our ancestors just like the Americans revere Thomas Jefferson and Abraham Lincoln and all of those. We have a past be before slavery, a great past, and we've been prevented. But now because of education and the Internet and technology, we can, this generation can access it. And so, yes, we can read many parts of this. That's really cool. That's cool, right? That's yeah. Really cool.
but for us, it's liberating. So, there. You're welcome. So, this particular stele in the first line, and we can review it, but you will see the word heka in it, and then you will see the word medu nature, which is divine language, and then you will see activities right of acting. So, yes, right there is medu nature, right? Over here is kind of like uh, to speak and to act, and this over here is heka, right? And so, um, we know that this person is talking about magic. So we know that the ter person is talking about speech. We know that he's talking about magic. And we know that he's talking because you see him as I. And then most people don't know with grammar, grammar comes from ancient Egypt because they use the same formula. This is I. Right? So he's, we know he is talking about himself and his capabilities. So this is one of the pieces that I came here to see, that he says that he knows magic, he knows meta nature, and basically um, it's a personal thing underneath his title. So between this, which birds? Which birds? like an owl bird. Yes, the owl is M. Right, it means two mm -hmm. within, right? Mm -hmm. And the there's the um, the there is the great this could be where bird, and what then bird? there um, meaning to be um, to be great, mm -hmm. or it could be the ah bird to make a sound like mm -hmm. ak, right? Mm -hmm. And so there are different, um, and then of course, there's bees. Um, this is the title of the king, mm -hmm. and um, this is the two ladies the vulture and the cobra, and this is um, pretty much, could be um, like tuhuti, like a tut bird. So there are, um, and, then, and then you put the words, um, you put the words together. So this one, this whole word means hotep dinosut usir osiris, and you see osiris right here? Mm -hmm. See him? Sure, yeah. um, Neb, jed, right? And, um, and then it's talking about wrong. a place, <laughs> yeah. Neb, um, Neb Jed, and this is a place. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll the, skip this for what else that I could see that I can say. This is a, a set. Um, so I'll have to sit down and read this whole line, but this is basically an offering to the... Nothing like this. Oh, um, where did you get educated from? Where did I get Yeah, where did you educate? Well, where'd I'm you? a doctor, so... I'm oh, you're a medical doctor, doctor. Yeah. so you know Imhotep. Yeah. You know Imhotep? You take the yeah. Imhotep oath. Yeah. Don't you take the ancient Egyptian you know? text to become a doctor? You never heard of Imhotep? He's the father of medicine in ancient Egypt. Okay. You never heard that? Yeah. Imhotep, look him okay, up. He's the father of medicine in the whole world. Okay. Um, does he have another name? No. But there's an oath. Don't you, don't you take no, when you... The Hippocratic you, oath. The Hippocratic okay. oath. Yeah. The Hippocratic oath. Okay, so... Um, and they don't talk about Imhotep in the no. Hippocratic Oath. No. So who is the person that they talk about? Who is the main person that they talk about in the Hippocratic Oath? They don't talk about people. They, they talk don't talk about, about your behavior. Your duties. Your duties. So when you go home, you look up Imhotep, and okay. you will find that he's the father of medicine because the ancient Egyptians did the first surgeries. They, did, um, they were experts in childbirth. Mm -hmm. They were experts in um, internal care. And of course, they were experts in mummification yeah. and all the embalming. other type of embalming and type of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So they did autopsies, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, what type of medicine do you practice? I practice psychiatry. Oh, so you're in the mind. Mm -hmm. So now, Imhotep is also the father of sleep. So here's medicine. an example of a connection between West African and Nile Valley culture. And here is the famous Kari shell girdle that um, will later be used in um, West Africa, but where did West Africa get its ideas and concepts from? Or where did Egypt get its ideas and concepts from? Here we see a continuity of African culture. Is in this the real gold? Of the, yes, it is. And we see a- Kairi uh, shell, supposedly? Yes, yes, it's an imitation of Kairi shell and real gold. Mm -hmm. And so that's how sacred it was, and it was really connected to fertility and the woman and how childbirth. How much do you think that's worth right there? Uh, quarter of a million dollars, this whole collection or more. 
Mm. And more, because it's a complete collection. Which one right here? It's a beautiful piece. So certainly here, we're talking about royal women and um, their uh, fertility and feminality. So then here we have the goddess Hathor um, as or Hetheru. And we see that this would be a girdle and these pieces would be around her waist and this would be around her ankles and these may be her earrings. Just to show um, the expression of um, women in ancient Kemet and their connection to um, their ideas. And you have to understand that all of ancient Egypt was for the family and at the top was the women. Women were the ideal of every of a lot of things like Maat was the ideal of moral ethics, Sashet was of science, Hetheru was of womanhood and motherhood. And then we see things that represent that in their everyday expressions. Um, huh? Okay. So there's a, a, a great comparison between ancient Egyptian culture uh, and the West and what Europeans think is great and what they value. And yes, they value their culture. But what's in their culture that's spiritual and sacred, um, if you look around, uh, that piece right over there, uh, sexuality, um, good and evil, Adam and Eve, those things are important, those concepts are important to um, Europeans. Um, Africans have a, a, a completely another concept of what is, is heroism, valor, um, and beauty. So you see um, a class of cultures when you visit uh, these museums because Egypt was, um, it fell in the first and four, after the first and fourth dynasty into an intermediate period and it picked itself up and it transformed into um, the next golden age which is the Middle Egyptian um, period where writing um, became great um, and it took many things from the past and we transformed it. So this is important, Sanetta, this uh, piece right here. Um, this is European conquest. Um, this is obviously, it looks like it's Napoleon. Um, or it definitely looks like it's uh, the French. So let's go and find out who this is. Let me see. Okay, so great. So we're talking, we're looking at Napoleon Bonaparte, who in turn, in one of his conquests, ended up in Egypt. And he is the one that they said, um, blew the nose off of the Sphinx because, um, this, uh, because it didn't reflect their culture. But this is um, a great picture of Napoleon Bonaparte, which Africans need to see and study because we were overrun by the French. Uh, okay. So I think that's the elevated door. No, that's the um, staff. Um, if you look at these pieces, they seem to have been influenced by ancient Egypt, and but they also are non-African people, and they have more dress like the um, so-called Hebrews or Semitic people, right? And here you see his left foot forward. So that means these people were trained in the mysteries of ancient Egypt. And this would be the sign to show that they were actually initiates or neophytes of ancient Egyptian culture. And we're gonna see a lot of that in a lot of this, um, um, all these um, statues. We're gonna see, there's a great one over there where you're gonna see his, um, his, yeah, his left foot forward, sorry. Uh, before I said right foot, but his uh, left foot forward. 
right? And you're going to see a lot of those pieces um, showing that they were initiates. But there's one piece, these, um, these two pieces that are over there, saw, which we have to get. So maybe if I walk over this way, right? That piece right there, that's a Phoenician. So that's the people that Hannibal came from. If you want, you can go close and read it. I got you. I'm back here. Yeah. So let me just read this. So this piece right here is definitely uh, a Phoenician sarcophagus um, showing you what they, in fact, look like. Let me see. Yes, it says the marble android sarcophagus uh, of 5th century uh, BC of Greco-Phoenician. So, Sa, you would see a lot of influence from the Phoenicians of other cultures. And so when I say behold the pale moor, what I am talking about is that the, the, the people, the Phoenicians and Kotchich were other people who got information from ancient Egypt, but were not ancient Egyptians at all. But we're going to continue our conversation. Let's see what else is over here. Interesting, here, um, this vase has a lot of symbols on it. It has the so-called swastika symbol in it. So how come people aren't outraged at this part when it's in other European art? But the fact of the matter, these are African symbols and these are the lotus flowers that you'll find in ancient Egypt. And you find these things are sacred of enough. Cyprus. This is Het Heru. So it shows you that they were learning from ancient Egypt. So I don't. Um, I know they ain't got our sister following us, man. I hope not, because if they do, that's a sad thing. That's just that's how they All do. All these so. white folks in there, she following black people. I know they ain't programming like that. Sad, you know. They got you programming like that down there. Following black people, because we went down there, you followed us down there. We come up here, you come up here. What's going on? Oh, okay. Because every time I look at you, you look and you turn away. He got a camera too. I'm just look. looking at your camera. No, he got one too. No, no, that's not why. See, I told I was you he was following. No, 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 it's no, was not. I was what's figuring out what's the thing on top. Because I'm into those type of things. I was never following you. you not exactly. such a thing. Exactly. It's not. Exactly. No, no, it's not. I'm not. Just tell me. That's all right. Just ask me a question. Let me answer It's all right. Um, these are also ships that, um, because they had the wood and timber for ships, so that the ancient Egyptians, it was important for them, and so the Phoenicians and the Africans did trade. But look at this piece right here, Sa. Huh? I don't know, they got another one coming. Um, this piece right here shows had her rule inside, inside, um, what you call it? They have another one. Inside of what? Huh? They show had her rule inside of Cyprus. So you see, if you, all you need to do is go back to the stolen legacy, and the stolen legacy will tell you the story of how these other people got their mysteries from ancient Egypt. So there's had her rule. So, this piece right here is a priceless piece of Het Heru in Cyprus, showing how ancient Egyptian civilization. Say something. Testing. I got you. Okay, watch. So, um, when we talk about the Phoenicians. What is important to, to know is that the ancient Egyptians influenced them. So, section over here, and they're nowhere to be found, except in the holy book. So, we went through several exhibitions again, looking for um, ancient Hebrews and. Yeah. So, we went through several exhibitions again today looking for the ancient uh, Hebrews in the context of other people. And we don't find the artifacts or what they say is in the Bible. 
And this is a major museum, so I have to ask, is the major museum anti-Semitic, or do they not have the information um, or, or an artifact of what the Bible says? We're going to take the elevator, because we are finished here. So, um, they don't, they, so the, the, this library, I mean this museum, does not substantiate what they believe and what they say. Why not walk in? Okay. We can um, walk down. It's a long walk. Yeah. So the burden now is on the other cultures, the Christians, the Hebrews, um, uh, the Arabs, to substantiate their place in history over Nile Valley uh, Africans. All you need is to come to a museum and either substantiate your case or not, right? And the, the, so the burden again is, is on the other religious cultures to show that they, if they say that they existed the way they existed, to show how. But this museum is not, does not substantiate uh, that. So we got a lot of other places to go. We got the Roman world to go to. Uh, we didn't go there. We go there another time. Um, and we certainly haven't dealt with Islam. Eventually, Sarnetta, we're going to deal with Islam, right? Um, so um, we are going to deal with the Moors first, and then we're going to circle back, and we're going to deal with uh, we're going to deal with Islam. Let's go through this way. So all through this museum, you will see um, art and artifacts. There's, is um, a st uh, that you can see where ancient Egypt or ancient Africa is the basis of, right? And influenced. And so you don't have to look far in European culture to see um, African culture. What? Oh, that's the type? Yes, yes. A lion that we've seen uh, many times. But, so we have these museums to use as clues, Sadnetta, for ancient influence. And so here, if you look up there, look the yes, that's Egyptian dress. So, right, left foot forward, left foot forward. Um, this is in early Greek, and we have been here before. And then over there, you see the Sphinx. Say left foot forward again? Yeah, left foot forward. And so, you see African influence in lots of civilizations. But you don't What's see the Sphinx. Yes, you see this, um, the Sphinx, and so you see Nile Valley culture, and then not only that, that's like the Tekno, like the obelisk, right? So you see lots of cultures using Nile Valley culture. Um, the only people who's really not using Nile Valley culture, Sarnetta, is us. Is us? Why? You think it's bad? I just think that we have Chris, to reinterpret oh, ourselves. Um, that's correct. Right, but we just have to reorientate re ourselves so that we can, because we're in search for the truth now. So thanks again for another um, great show at um, House of Consciousness. Sarnetta, that's correct. Contact Sarnetta, contact Reggie. December 12th, if you want to go to a uh, museum, contact Rap Marketing at Hotmail.com. Uh, uh, December 13th is the great. Uh, comedic war conference where some of us are going to settle our differences so that we could have uh, so that we could be stronger uh, we're going to put away false fallacies we bring out some of the best scholars uh, to deal with Nile Valley culture so um, it's going to be uh, an incredible conference not to be missed historical right and that you should get your tickets uh, you should get there early you should bring your books, um, you should, and you should make an investment in the House of Consciousness and the education that you're getting with uh, Brother Reggie, uh, Brother Polite, the Amin Ra Squad, right? And Infidishi and so, so many others uh, because you're not gonna get this information anywhere else. This is groundbreaking information every time that we talk and 
um, this is our life's work. And we give this all to you for your liberation, to liberate your mind, to free your African minds. So again, thanks for another, uh, watching another edition of House of Consciousness, Sarnetta Studios with Brother Reggie on location with Sarnetta. Peace, Black Pop. That's what's up, my brother. Excellent, excellent right there, man. They can pick me up. They can hear me. That was real good. Hopefully the people will come out for this one. Let them know because this might this will be the last one before next year because yes. winter is upon us. Yes. So let them know. Let them know. So if you're going to make an investment in yourselves uh, for the holidays, for the change of the seasons, coming to this conference will be an incredible investment for yourselves. Many of you won't be able to make it to ancient Kemet, but you should. But before you do that, you should make an investment in learning. Many people go to ancient Kemet and all they do is point. Oh, there's the pyramids. Oh, look at Luxor, right? Oh, look at this. But they can't read the Meta Nature. They can't experience it. They can't see. All they're doing is looking and they can't see. The House of Consciousness is getting bigger and better every day because we're bringing in some of the best young scholars that, um, that are available to deal with the ancient languages and it's just not Nile Valley language, it's, it's all language. The Hebrews are welcome to come in and to show their language, right? The Christians are welcome to show ancient Aramaic scripts and other scripts, Coptic, right? Um, this is an all black experience as long as you keep it truthful, right? So this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So come down December 12th and December 13th Two. This will be the last tour for the year. And so I don't know if it will be. You might be coming back. So ha -ha, you might yeah. be coming back in the winter. I don't know. Right? And then you can for Metanetta classes. Uh, if you're in the New York uh, uh, tri-state area, contact Brother Reggie at Rap Marketing at Hotmail.com so that we can teach you how to look at the Metanetta. Right? See, for us, people come to us all over the world when we stop in the museum, and they want to talk to us. Why? Because they can't read something that we can read. Don't you want to be like that for your children? Think about it for your families, right? Taking your families, being able to take your families to the museum and read the glimpses and ancient signs and symbols of African people. For us, walking uh, with you today is a treasure of a lifetime because normally you have Europeans spinning it for their culture and their purposes, pushing you on the bottom. Here, we make African primacy. We make you the first, we make you the most important, and we do it truthfully, whereas the other people ignore the facts. So we looked at several important stellas. We looked at the boundary stella of Sinwar Set. We looked at a mystery system stella. We looked um, I want you to keep walking. Don't act like the camera's on. Just talk. Right. So think about, so in summary, today we learned, or we looked at the Sinwar Set Stella, the Boundary Stella, that showed that African people were having a problem with their neighbors, right? And they were selling their problems by putting up boundaries. We looked at a mystery system, Stella. A mystery system, Stella, that shows that this man knew magic, he knew art and art, I mean, he knew magic, he knew the sacred words, the hieroglyphics, right? And he knew the spells. We also made the verge between West Africa and Kenchikimit. We show why the cowrie shell is so important to West Africa and that it got its origins in ancient Kemet. We show Sinwar Set, who was, who, who became Sosostris to the Greeks, who was the person who gave the idea of city and states to the ancient Greek called Salon, because he had the lessons on rebuilding ancient Kemet. The 12th dynasty is a remarkable uh, period in African history because 
the Egyptians were falling from their own success. Meaning, how do you fall from your own success? Meaning that you don't have to think about tomorrow. Everything is successful. But when you start hiring people who are incompetent, your civilization can fall. And that's what happened uh, after the fifth dynasty. So Kemen had to pick itself up. It had to fortify itself against invaders. It had to redefine and reconstruct African civilization. And so the 12th dynasty, which is probably the smallest time period of the dynasties, I say the old kingdom was about 550 years. I say that the uh, middle kingdom was probably about 400 years. Uh, so of the dynasties, the middle kingdom before the Hikes Coast came and overran Egypt for a while was probably the smallest dynasty but it was able to pick a failing Egypt up, renew it and rebirth it. This is what we study. Why? How does this fix black people's lives? Because we have to learn how to pick our civilizations up, pick our people up from and using the past as a basis for that. When you brought Unk to the museum, how was Unk's response when he seen this? Unk, Unk loves primary information. So one thing is to see it in a book. Yes, Unk put up a show, I, I believe, of his uh, tour with me, right? And if Uncle Keck likes a tour with Brother Reggie, you know I'm a bad, bad man. That's what one of the posters says. You know, they keep saying Brother Reggie's a bad, bad man. Um, and if you watch me with Uncle Keck, I'm walking, I'm, I'm teaching him with the primaries. And so all the different things that he does in the Amira squad, the museum was a perfect place for it to come together for intellectual warfare. So, um, but this is what we give to you in the House of Consciousness, watching Sardinia Studios, right? This is just the, the most incredible intellectual reality show, if you want to call it, right, that you are getting for free. For free. And we have to give it to you like this because we depend on you to be better, to be better with truth with things that you can prove instead of regurgitating or belief and religion. So, like a stray dog. Well, he know where he's going. <laughs> so, so, and he's an older dog. So, welcome again. Uh, um, he's minding his business. <laughs>